So in this video, I will discuss the tangential and normal components of acceleration. So the acceleration of an object describes the change in both the magnitude and direction of the velocity, okay? So the acceleration is not necessarily produced due to the change in the magnitude of velocity only. Sometimes it is produced due to the change in the direction of the velocity even if the magnitude is unchanged and sometimes due to the change in both the magnitude and direction of the velocity, okay? Uh, and also the direction of the acceleration A is not necessarily in the direction of the velocity, okay? So if uh, the velocity V is changing in its magnitude only, like in this case, um, uh, which is a motion along a straight line, then A is parallel to V, okay? Because the direction of A is in the direction of delta V. And delta V here is in this direction, so this is the direction of A. Um, so A is parallel to V if V is increasing, and if V is decreasing, then A will be anti-parallel uh, to V, okay? Uh, and if the velocity is changing only in its direction, like in this case here, uh, which is motion along a curved path with a constant speed, then A is uh, always perpendicular to the velocity at each point, okay? Uh, so A is, uh, is in the direction of delta V. Uh, and finally, if the velocity V is changing in both magnitude and direction, um, then A will be directed at some angle to V, uh, as shown here, okay? Uh, and in this case, uh, the acceleration A can be resolved into a parallel and a perpendicular component. Uh, so this parallel component is known as the tangential acceleration and it corresponds to the change in the magnitude of the velocity, okay? And the perpendicular uh, component is known as the normal uh, acceleration and it corresponds to the change in the direction of V, okay? And these components can be viewed to be directed along a rectangular coordinate system. Uh, and this uh, coordinate system moves with the particle as it is moving in space, okay? And the particle is located at the origin. Um, so the parallel or tangential component of acceleration is always tangent to the path, and the perpendicular or normal component is always normal to the path at each point. Um, and in terms of unit vectors, let uh, T um, be a unit vector along the tangent axis, and n to be a unit vector along the normal axis. Uh, so let b uh, here be a unit vector directed normal to both uh, t and n. It is the known as the binormal vector, okay? And it is equal to the cross product of t times n. Um, so these unit vectors form a frame known as the TMB frame that moves with the particle. Uh, and for more details about these unit vectors, you may refer to my book, which is in the link in the About section. Uh, and the book is available for free, okay? Uh, so we can write the acceleration, the total acceleration, in terms of these unit vectors. Uh, and you can find the derivation of this expression in my book, okay? Uh, so here, this is the tangential acceleration, which is dv over dt, and this is the normal acceleration, v squared over r. Uh, and r here is the radius of curvature at a certain point on the path, okay? Uh, so let's consider this example. So suppose that a car is moving with a constant tangential acceleration down the ramp, um, and if it starts from rest at A and it reaches B after 4 seconds with a speed of 10 meter per second, um, we want to find the radius of curvature at B if the total acceleration there is uh, 3.2 meter per second square. Uh, so the tangential acceleration is equal to 10 over 4 seconds, which is equal to 2.5 meter per second square. Uh, and we know the total acceleration at B, which is 3.2, and so we get the normal acceleration at B is 2 meter per second square. Uh, 
And so the radius of curvature uh, of this path at B is equal to 50 meters. Uh, so let's now discuss uniform circular motion. So consider a particle moving in a circular path with a constant speed. Um, so this kind of motion is known as uniform circular motion because in this motion the direction of the velocity of the particle is continuously changing, okay? But the magnitude of the velocity is constant throughout the motion. Uh, and as we mentioned in the previous slide, when only the direction of the velocity changes, the acceleration is always perpendicular to the velocity at any instant of time, okay? Um, and so we only have the normal component of the uh, acceleration, which is v square over r, um, because uh, the speed is constant, so the uh, tangential component is equal to zero. Uh, and for the circular path, the radius of curvature r is constant, and we can denote it by small r. Uh, so the normal acceleration here uh, is also directed along the radius of the circle, right? So we may refer to it as the radial acceleration, and sometimes as the centripetal acceleration, uh, because it is directed towards the center of the circle. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, both uh, V and A are changing continuously in direction, but their magnitudes are constant. Uh, so the time required for the particle to complete one revolution um, around the circle is known as the period of revolution and is given by 2 pi r over V. And the radial uh, component, we can express it as 4 pi square r over t square. Okay, uh, so let's consider an example. So suppose that in a funfair ride, uh, the passengers rotate in a circle with a constant speed of 5 meters per second, and the period of revolution is 7 seconds, okay? Um, so we want to find the total acceleration of a passenger in the ride. So uh, because the speed of the passenger is constant, um, he or she is in a uniform circular motion. So the total acceleration of the passenger is just the normal or centripetal acceleration, okay? Uh, so we first find the radius uh, of the circular path, which is 5.5 meters, and then the radial acceleration is 4.5 meter per second square. Uh, so let's consider now a non-uniform circular motion. And in this type of motion, both the magnitude and direction of the velocity change. Um, and in that case, the total acceleration will be directed at uh, some angle to V at each point, okay? Um, so here the uh, green arrow is the total acceleration. Uh, so for this type of motion, we have both components. The normal component uh, corresponding to the change in the direction and the a tangential component that corresponds to the change in the magnitude. Uh, so the figure here shows the velocity and total acceleration vectors of a particle moving in a circular path, um, first with increasing speed clockwise until it reaches the maximum speed at the bottom, and then it slows down as it goes back upward. Uh, so as you can see, the radial component, uh, A radial here, is largest at the bottom because the speed here uh, is maximum, okay? So the total acceleration here is all uh, radial, and then uh, the radial acceleration is smallest at the top uh, when the speed is least. Uh, and also for the tangential component, as you can see, uh, as the car is going down, the tangential component uh, is in the same direction as the velocity, okay? Uh, because the car is speeding up. Um, and then the tangential component is opposite to the velocity as the car um, goes up because it is slowing down. Uh, so let's consider this example. So suppose that a car is moving in a circular track of radius of 20 meters and it accelerates uniformly from a speed of 30 kilometers per hour to 50 kilometers per hour in three seconds. Um, and we want to find the total acceleration of the car at the instant its speed is 40 kilometers per hour. 
so first we convert the speed to meter per second by multiplying by 1000 and dividing by 3600 okay uh, so we calculate the tangential acceleration and it is equal to 1.83 uh, meter per second square um, and then the radial acceleration is 6.2 meter per second square and then the total acceleration is the square root of uh, a tangential square plus uh, a radial square and this gives the uh, total acceleration at that instant when the speed is 40 kilometer per hour is equal to 6.5 uh, meter per second square uh, so thank you for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video